And now to our market monitor, who doesn't believe that the market is out of the woods just yet. So he's being, he says, selective and cautious with his buying. He's Jeff Sought, chief investment strategist at Raymond James. Last time he was on, nearly 18 months ago, he recommended Dexcom, which is up 128 percent, and Johnson & Johnson, which is down 5 percent. <laughs> Jeff, welcome. God, I didn't know it was that long. Uh, do you still like both of those companies, Dexcom and J&J? &J? I, I do. I, I think that uh, for conservative folks, Johnson & Johnson has a favorable rating from our analyst, and uh, it has a nice portfolio of businesses. And Dexcom makes the best wireless glucose blood monitoring system on the planet. All right, Jeff. So let's get to some of your picks. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing, pronouncing this right. Stonemore Partners, LP? Yeah, you know, it, it, bottoms tend to be a process, not an event. We had an event last fall on October 15th where you had a V-shaped bottom. But most of the time, you come down into a capitulation low, and then it takes six to eight weeks to form a bottom. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure the bottom has been made. But if we are making a bottom, I'm going to be conservative with the yield name. Stonemore is like a desk stock. Cemeteries has a decent yield to it. Our, our analyst has a strong buy rating on it. All right, let's move on to Genesis Energy LP. Uh, tell me what they do and why you like them. They are a midstream master limited partnership, so they're basically a toll taker. They don't have great price sensitivity to crude oil. The crude oil's got to go through the pipes. It's got to be stored somewhere. Uh, Grant Sims is the CEO. He's arguably the best CEO in the space. We think they're going to continue to increase their distribution, and our analysts like that one as well. And Flaherty and Kermine Preferred Securities. Yeah, Don Crumine is arguably the best straight preferred portfolio manager on the planet. He ran portfolios for Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett in the preferred space. He's got two closed-in funds that are trading at a discount to their net asset values with really decent yields. Let's turn back to the market more broadly after today's jobs report. Are you optimistic that the market could end the year higher, even though in this most immediate term you describe yourself as selective and cautious? What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, our models turned cautious in the first part of July. We said the markets were going into a period of contraction. I didn't mm -hmm. think it would be this deep. I do think we've made a capitulation low on the 24th and 25th of August. So if I had to bet, I would bet stocks are higher by year end rather than lower. And what does the Fed do and when? You know, I, I, th I think that the, the when it does it is not the important. I think it's tr the trajectory and the pace of rate increases. My model has always called for a November increase, even though there's no FOMC meeting. That's certainly an out-of-consensus call. It sure is. Well, we'll have to have you back in November then, Jeff. <laughs> we don't want it to be this long again. Thanks so much for joining us. Jeff Sal with Raymond James. You